In this video, I want to share with you 10 steps to get back in the sky safely after a break. What's up, skydivers? It's Catherine Bernier from Skydive Vibes, sharing the passion of skydiving and helping you become better and safer skydivers. So if you're new here, consider subscribing not to miss our weekly videos all about skydiving. So not long ago, I did interview a skydiving instructor to let us know about what is recommended by the USPA and his own recommendations for getting back in the sky after a break. Talking, of course, about recurrency jump. You can watch this video with DJ Marvin from the Rating Center by clicking right here. Well, after shooting that video, I found a checklist that was shared online about 10 steps before getting back into the sky, and I found that it was pretty interesting, so I had to share it with you. So step number one, you've not been jumping for a while, you have your skydiving gear in your closet, well, take it out, open your parachute, air it out, and repack it. I remember a story that I heard, not sure if it's true or not, but that makes some sense, where someone did jump with an equipment that was packed for a long time and he didn't unpack it and repack it before jumping it. Well, what happened is that that gear was in humidity and it turns out that he was jumping in a colder time of the year, of the season, maybe at the beginning or at the very end. And so when he jumped the equipment, the equipment was actually stuck altogether because of humidity and the temperature, it was actually frozen in some parts. So that caused him not being able to deploy his main canopy. The story doesn't tell if he was able to deploy his reserve, but that can be dangerous to not air out and open your gear when it has been sitting in the closet for a long time. So for that matter, I think that's a very good idea to unfold and unpack your main canopy, air it out, and then pack it back together. And that's a bonus practice for you before starting to jump. The next step is to inspect your gear. Check your pins, check your closing loops, check your straps, really do an in-depth check of your equipment, your lines, your soft links, your attachment points to make sure that your gear is in good shape. And if you are on a jumping break, well, it's the best time to do it because on a daily basis when you're jumping and you're in a rush to get onto the next load, well, you don't have time to do this detailed check. So why not do it? during your break. The next step is to revise your emergency procedures. Of course, a safe skydiver always refresh his mind of the emergency procedures and of course should be always ready to react. Here are some of the procedures you should remind yourself with. First, we can think about the aircraft procedures. Until which altitude do you need to stay attached to the plane? If there's an emergency, do you know which canopy to open depending on the altitude of exit? About your equipment, do you know when to release your RSL? Do you actually know you need to release it in some cases? You can also remind yourself of the exit and free fall procedures. Do you know how to do a good spot? By the way, there's a video right there about what is spotting, how to do a good spot, and why we actually need to do it. You also want to be careful not to bump into the plane during the exit. Gotta keep that in mind. Are you fully aware of your canopy skills and tips and tricks for good landings? I got your back, check this one out. And about your emergency procedures, did you rehearse them? Did you really feel your handles and your gear on yourself before actually being on the drop zone? Do that at home, put your gear on, check, do your handle practices, your handle checks, lay down just like DJ said in a previous video, because the position of your gear when you're lying down versus standing up is different. So lay down, try to practice your main canopy deployments, practice your pulls, practice an emergency situation. And about emergency situations, do you know your opening problems? your low speed malfunctions, your high speed malfunctions, how to react to those. Do you have a decision altitude? Which means do you have an altitude in your mind that by then you need to take a decision depending on what's happening above you? 
And one last element talking about emergency procedures. Did a study come up from a manufacturer or an instructor saying that now in that specific case, you need to react that way? It's always important to be up to date to the procedures. I know you'll say that that was a long step, but hey, emergency procedures are so important. You got to know how to react if something wrong happens. That's part of being a skydiver. You got to be ready, aware and ready to react. Now, next step, check the wind, check your landing pattern, visualize your flare, your flare timing. I know it's a hard thing for newer skydivers. I had a hard time myself with that. What helped me was to actually check point of view videos, meaning that I would check videos of skydivers landing, but filming with their own camera. So that way I was trying to figure out when they were flaring and I was trying to look at the horizon and around them to know what was the actual height of them landing. And it also helped me with the ground perspective, with the speed when we're landing, we have a forward speed that can change the perception of the distance of the ground. So that helped me a lot too. Next step, keep the first jump simple. That's something that I have to my heart because every start of a skydiving season, I do a solo skydive. So whatever, my friends are there, they want, they've want they been jumping for a week, they want to jump with me. I'm like, no, the first jump, I do it alone. Why? Because I want to focus. I want to rehearse all my emergency procedures and stuff. I want to get back into my gear. I did that at home, but at the drop zone with the excitement, that's different. So I want to be in my zone for that first jump. And in the sky during the free fall, I like to do some drills, some of the series we've learned in our A license or B license and even C license. Those are always great to get back your skills in the sky, doing some slides, turns, flips, barrel rolls. I like to actually do all of those during my first jump of the season. And also under canopy, I keep it conservative. I remind myself of my skills. I do a good landing pattern and focus on my flare, not getting distracted by anything happening on the landing area. So this way, when I land from that jump, that was the first jump of my season or after a break, and I'm now back in the game. I'm a safe skydiver again. And now fun begins. Step six, you might want to pull higher or actually do a high pull if you're allowed to. Why? Because taking the time to master back your canopy skills, I would say that the canopy skills are even more important than the free fall skills. You got to be safe in free fall. But even though you are a little bit rusty, that doesn't equate to being rusty on a landing. <laughs> so I would say that canopy skills are important to master specifically landing pattern and the landing. Do some flares once you are above 2000 feet, practice your flares and try to find back that sweet spot during your flaring that will allow you to have smooth landings. And I just told you, the next step, which was finding your canopy sweet spot and flaring in the air, doing some practice of flares. Step eight, take time to debrief yourself after that first jump. Did everything went as planned? What should you need to focus on the next time, improve a little bit and uh, be aware really for the next time. So take the time to reflect back on your first jump again, so that you are better aware in your next jumps. There might be something that you wanted to improve. So taking the time to debrief yourself, think about what just happened can help you maybe improve on the next jump, even though you're not alone. Step number nine, that one is really important. It's your first jump after a break. Make sure to jump a canopy type and size that you're used to. You don't want to downsize on the first jump after a break. You have many, many things to think about and refresh yourself about. Don't go in there and try to downsize the first exact jump of after a break. That's actually logic, but I know during breaks we are shopping for new gear. We might have bought a new canopy. If you're already sold your old canopy, maybe try to borrow one or rent one from your drop zone in order to at least do that first jump of the year with a canopy that you're used to fly with. Step 10, the favorite one of every skydiver, 
it's time to have a tasty drink around a campfire at the end of the jumping day. Make sure to enjoy the time with your friends, your skydiver friends, that you're so happy to finally see again and jump with. All right, so I hope you've liked this quick video on different steps you should look for before getting back into the sky. I hope you guys keep yourself safe. You can watch other videos from Skydive Vibes right here and make sure to subscribe not to miss our weekly videos all about skydiving and even skydiving compilations as we started to do. So on that, keep jumping, stay safe and blue skies.